Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are looking at the strategy of partitioning rectangles when it comes to uh, large number multiplication. We are in our home links, Unit 4, Lesson 3. So let's uh, take a look at this strategy. Using partitioning rectangles hinges on the idea that a number like 72 is built from 7 tens and 2 ones hence the name 72. So if I can take that number apart in my head, then I can isolate each place value, multiply those place values using my knowledge of single di digit multiplication, and then uh, reassemble those two products to get my grand total. So seven tens is just a seven, with a zero behind it. So when I multiply seven times five, I get 35, and then I just remember to add the zero. Seven tens times five is 35 tens, otherwise known as 350. And then I just multiply two times five, that gives me 10, of course. Uh, and then when I uh, add 350 plus 10, that gives me 360. So that's just an easy way for you to use your understanding of single-digit multiplication to bridge the gap to get you to multiplying larger numbers. So let's try one of these problems. So 4 times 35 is my problem here. So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle and create a partition. That's a fancy way of just saying I cut it in half. And the two boxes within the rectangle are going to be for my tens place value and my ones place value. Okay? So I'm going to take the number 35 and I'm going to break it down into its tens, which is three tens, and its ones, five. Thirty five. And then I'm going to multiply each part by four. Now again, using my knowledge of extending multiplication facts by just Looking at the single digit uh, uh, place values, I can uh, easily determine that 30 times 4 is 120 because 3 times 4 is 12, and I just add that 0. 3 tens times 4 gives me 12 tens, or 120. And then I multiply 5 times 4, of course that's 20. We all knew that. And then what I do is I just add the two amounts together, 120 plus 20. And that's right, it's going to give me 140. Easy, right? Mr. Wasman, how do I know that's right? That seems very convoluted. Is there a way that I could prove that answer is correct? Well, it's funny that you should ask. Because there is. Because what is multiplication if not repeated addition? So what am I doing when I multiply 4 times 35? I'm basically saying I'm going to take 35 and add it to itself 4 times. So if I add 35 plus 35 plus 35 plus 35, that will give me my product. So if I add the ones together, 5 plus 5 is 10, plus another 5 is 15, plus a fourth 5, that gives me 20, so i got to carry the 10. There's 2. Uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 3 more is 8, plus another 3 is 11, plus another 3 is 14. Oh, look at that. The answers match. But what did I do here when I added those four 35s together? Well, if you look right here, I isolated my fives, or the uh, five ones, and I basically added four fives together. That's my four times five. And then what did I do here? I added my four tens together. That's three times four. 
or 30 times 4. I'm just ignoring the 0 there when I add my uh, single digit tens. It gives me 120. And then what do I do here when I add my 2 to my tens column? Well, that's basically taking my product of 4 times 5, which is 20. I'm just bringing it up to the top and just remembering that the 2 on top of my tens column has a 0. Um, I'm just ignoring it because I remember my place values. So you see this uh, partitioning rectangles business works. So I will let you try these next two problems on your own, 83 times 6 and 49 times 9. Use the strategy, practice it, uh, see how it works. And finally, I'm going to uh, take a moment to uh, demonstrate one of these problems from the bottom in the practice section. Uh, the folks at Everyday Math uh, continue to ask you to try to add and subtract large digit numbers. And that is because they know that this is a skill that, uh, even though we practiced in the, in the first unit, uh, this is something that you need to uh, know all the time. You're never not going to need how to know how to add four-digit numbers together or subtract numbers in the thousands. So why don't I just take problem number six. 5,619 plus 5,999. So again, because they set it up uh, sideways in a number sentence, I'm going to rewrite it as a vertical algorithm. So all I'm going to do is just rewrite the problem in the space below. 5,619 plus 5,999. Now, since we were uh, doing some estimation in the previous lesson, why don't we just take a look real quick and determine about how big should my answer be? Well, if I round 5,619 to the nearest thousand, it's going to round up to 6,000. So will the bottom number, because it's just one off. So if I add those two together, I'm going to get a total of about... 12,000, okay? So my answer should be about that big. So let's do the calculations. 9 plus 9 gives me 18, so I'm going to carry the 10. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 9 is 11, so i got to carry that 1. That represents a 100. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 9 is... 16, I'm going to carry that, 1, that represents 1,000, and then 10 plus uh, 1 is, of course, 11. So that gives me a total of 11,618. Now, if I round that to the nearest 1,000, that would round up to 12,000. So my estimate was reasonable. Okay. If you have any questions about partitioning rectangles or need some help with the large digit addition subtraction you see down at the bottom or any questions about math in general, please feel free to reach out to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you. If you have questions, you need to ask them. Otherwise, uh, we will talk again soon, friends. Thank you.